And you've actually measured um, the, the content of glucoraphanin and or sulforaphane in some of these supplements that are found on the market. Is that correct? We, you, we have. We and have. you found yes. that uh, there's, there's only a really small amount of, of supplements that actually contain what they say they contain. Yes. Um, I think one of them you mentioned was um, a French company that has, uh, ha actually has sulforaphane in it. Prostaphane. Yes. Um, so I've actually been told that there, and I, I think it was someone in the industry that told me this, that there are something like a thousand supplements that claim to have broccoli sprouts or broccoli extracts in them that are on the market now. I certainly, it would, you know, it would take me uh, all of my waking hours to try to uh, vet that statement and, and validate the content of each of them. But in our lab, we, we have looked at a, a number of supplements, um, some of those that are more, more prominent or that you see advertised, uh, uh, or, or some of those that we've just we've been aware of because we know people that have asked us about them. Um, and many of them, you know, 20 years ago, there were a bunch of supplements that said they, they you know, have sulforaphane and sulforaphane cures cancer because John Hopkins says so. Right. This is highly inaccurate, and they should have been taken to court, but um, uh, you can't make statements like that. Nobody has shown that any of these supplements prevent cancer or cure cancer. Um, we certainly hope to be part of the group of scientists who are able to put some teeth behind that evidence, um, and eventually, I think one day, it, will, it may be shown that in people, cancer can be prevented by, by taking something like sulforaphane but that has not been proven to date. So anyway, we, we, to get back to your question, we have looked at a variety of supplements. Um, 20 years ago when they started coming out, there were many supplements that we could demonstrate were, were not even broccoli sprout or broccoli, had no broccoli in them, yet they said they were broccoli uh, um, supplements. Um, people were selling what they called broccoli seeds and when you actually grew them out and grew plants from them. You grew cauliflower or you grew uh, canola or rapeseed from them or something else. Or um, in some more egregious cases, we found stuff that was sold as broccoli seeds that, that um, was really alfalfa seeds. So there were a lot of liberties were taken, a lot of shysters were on the market. I think that's cleaned up somewhat now, but now there are a ton, and I, I, you know, as I say, I was told a thousand, but there are many, many, many supplements that say they have sulforaphane or glucoraphanin in them. We have a, analyzed a small number of them, um, those that are made by labs or companies that you know, we've read and heard good things about that haven't been challenged by the FDA for, for uh, sanitation problems or for uh, labeling, mislabeling. Um, and there are supplements that contain glucoraphanin alone. There are a few now that contain glucoraphanin plus myrosinase, and there are a few that contain sulforaphane. Right. We're, um, we're publishing, this should be out in the next week or two, um, a paper in which we actually looked at the um, bioavailability of sulforaphane from a French supplement um, that is, it's, it's called uh, prostaphane. Um, it was, um, there have been, a, uh, there's been at least one publication that looked at its ability to um, uh, change the, the PSA trajectory in, in men with prostate, uh, who have had prostate cancer. And that's a biomarker um, for prostate that's cancer. A biomarker for yeah. prostate cancer return, right. Um, and so, uh, those tablets, they're, they're um, tablets that should be refrigerated uh, to prolong the, the, the life of the sulforaphane in them. Um, ha the bioavailability of the sulforaphane from those tablets was essentially identical to that from powders that we made in the lab by extracting broccoli sprouts and treating them with myrosinase and freeze drying them. That's very impressive. So we were, we were delighted to see that, that uh, that they worked, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're they're not being sold in the U.S. I I, I hope that uh, one of the supplement companies can. I, I hope that somehow or another, business the business of supplements gets them to this country. Yeah. Um, we've also, 
I mean, we, we haven't really talked much about the clinical trials we've been involved with, but um, I can tell you that about a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, we finally reached our limit in terms of the ability of our center, this is called the Coleman Chemo Protection Center here at Johns Hopkins, uh, we reached the limits of our ability to produce broccoli sprout extracts for clinical trials, for essentially for other people's clinical trials. We are a small group and we've done a number of small clinical trials here. But um, we've had many, many people come to us looking for something they can use in a clinical trial, people with expertise in areas different than ours, like asthma and allergy and COPD and, and um, a variety of psychological neuropsychiatric conditions. And so um, we've supplied them with powders, freeze-dried extracts that we made. Um, I, I'd like to say we made them all at Johns Hopkins. We actually had to go all the way across the country to the largest freeze-drying factory in the world. It's called Oregon Freeze-Dry and do the extraction, hundreds and hundreds of gallons, ex do the extractions there and use their massive freeze drying facilities, then do all the quality assurance and bring them back to Baltimore. In many cases, we had them put into gel caps so that they were easier to dose um, and, and, and repeated quality assurance and microbial testing and on and on and on. And then all of the paperwork and documentation that goes along with that. I'm saying that in a sense to complain but to say that as a basic research operation, we were becoming overwhelmed with um, uh, being a little too helpful, I guess you could say, to people who, who had very interesting clinical trials that we wanted to see happen right. because they were working <laughs> with this stuff that we had discovered and worked with. Um, so a couple of years ago, I, I went to uh, a, a small number of supplement companies and said, help, um, and challenged them to take the supplements that they were making that we had tested and verified were contained what they said they had and to offer to supply them for clinical trials that, that we were approached about, about partnering on. Um, and not only to supply the material free of charge, but to supply all the documentation and paperwork that would go along with um, an application to an, an institutional review board or to the FDA, in fact, for an investigational new drug application for permission to work on that disease with that compound. Um, and a few companies did come forward. One of them is called Nutramax, and, and they have a product called Avmacol, which they sort of took a, a page from our playbook, and they, they make something with glucoraphanin and myrosinase. Um, and so that's actually been used in a number, quite a large number of clinical trials now. And so I don't think, uh, we've tested it in people, of course. Um, I don't think there's anything ready to be published yet, but those publications will be coming along mm -hmm. very shortly. And, and that actually does contain mm -hmm. the glucoraphin and myrosinase, and you've validated that. Yes, we would certainly not recommend something to anybody without checking it, and we've checked every batch that, that they've put on the market um, okay. because we don't want to be in a position, I don't want to have egg on my face and have right. recommended to, <laughs> to a friend that this is a, a product worth using and then and then have it turn out to be a dud. So you mentioned the sulforaphane one, which is the, the prostaphane, the abmacol, Ab which has the glucoraphanin plus the myrosinase, and then there's the one that just has glucoraphanin. Uh, I think you mentioned it was by Thorne. They're one of a number of companies that, of number. that have a decent, uh, that I shouldn't say that have a decent one. They're probably, you know, if you put this on a webinar, there are probably going to be 10 companies that say, <laughs> right. we have a decent right, one right. too. I'm sure there are others. <laughs> I'm sure there are, but, 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 but you've we've tested. Te we've tested. And that's important. Yeah, yeah. It, yes. We've tested a product by Thorne, uh, which is a, a, a medium or large size supplement maker, mm -hmm. and their product is called Crucera right. SGS. But that only has glucoraphanin. And, right. And this right. actually kind of